Kings of Dirt is presented to you by Broadlink. Serious bandwidth for serious business. Brother. Print, copy, scan, fax, label and so much more. Driven by the all-new Ford Ranger. Ford, go further. And KTM, ready to race. Coming up on this week's Kings of Dirt, we take a look at the highlights of round four of the National Off-Road Championship from Stella in the Northwest. It's a small town in the northwest, and it consists of a lot of farmers. There's a lot of industry. There's a, a gold mine, uh, Kalahari Gold, and there's also uh, a dairies, big dairies, and there's chicken farmers, milk farmers. Uh, there's a lot of schools in Stella, and uh, we are part of the Texas of Africa, best cattle in, in the country. Uh, if you enter Stella, you find the Stella soap pan. There's a, 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 they used to make salt in the old days. The people come with their ox wagons and come and make uh, salt at Stella, buy salt at Stella, and then go back to Pitlesi and the other regions of the country in, in, in the Kalahari to feed their cattle salt. the halfway point of the season and championships still far from being decided it was crunch time for the competitors from here on it's all about winning it's a little bit chillier this morning so it's going to be a little bit difficult opening the road but uh, I'm going to have some fun today you know I'm looking forward to it uh, the route looks like pretty much like Botswana style so I think it's going to be good for me today I've never been here before I'm really uh, actually quite uh, amped to ride uh, the terrain looks really good, the traction is, it was felt amazing yesterday, so really excited. Today is, looks like it's going to be a nice day, uh, this terrain looks pretty good, hopefully not too dangerous and I'm sure that uh, my Mata's tyres are going to give my, my Fox Silkily and Force Fuels Bruce KTM the grip that it needs to, to get up there. If we look around it's very flat and I think it's going to be fast, so if I can get a top 5 overall I'll be happy again and just win my class. Confidence comes with when you're having fun on the bike, and I'm having so much fun on the bike, so I'm pretty confident. You know, we're going to take it as it comes. You know, if I, if I win there today, it's going to be great. It's going to be a bonus, but I'm going to keep my head, stay on two wheels, and have as much fun as I can. The thing is, Ross has got like a nine-point gap, so it's Lawrence and myself really need to beat him so we can close the gap. We can't let him run away with it, so yeah, it's just pretty much go out there and hang cable. With two wins out of three, it was all about catching Ross Branch in his first full national competitive season. Kenny Gilbert and Lawrence Mahoney, not far behind on points, knew it was now or never. With a healthy 10-point lead in the overall championship, Ross Branch got proceedings underway on the 350-kilometer race, with Kenny Gilbert following 15 seconds later. With such dry conditions, once again, dust would be the contributing factor from the start line. Both KTM riders, Lawrence Mahoney and Lo Schmidt, were straight into it. And with the sun still low over the horizon, the first lap was sure to be a lot slower. The 
it's quite open here, the terrain, so you can kind of see the dust for quite a while. It's just when you get into their, when you close into their, like, probably 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you're obviously in their dust, so you just got to kind of hope you make some mistake or, yeah, you don't want to take too many risks. The last race was my best, as you said, and I'm very happy with that. Knowing a few of the fast guys in the 450s fell out, so I was privileged enough to move up two positions, but my goal for the year was to get a top five overall, and obviously on the 250 it's very hard, but I need to push myself to get up there. With a great 2013 season behind him, Tim Young has come back in 2014 and is holding on to fifth in the championship with a large pack breathing down his neck, including 250 class leader Tyron Miller. Jared Katsia shrugged off an early crash which could have ended his entire season, but the kid just shrugged it off, but he would have to rejoin much further down the order. No, I think it's definitely a lot of experience that comes into play at the Senior National. I don't think you can just pitch up here and uh, expect the top five. You know, it's really, really hard work and uh, the more experience you have, the, the easier it is. After a DNF in the last round, Dylan Engs was looking to get back on track for the season. And after only 30 kilometers, he'd already made up big ground. Lawrence Mahoney has been training with Bernard McGee throughout the season, and it shows as the pace of the Yamaha rider has increased drastically as he lies in the top 10 of the championship. There's two loops. The one loop is the red loop uh, for the bikes uh, in the beginning and the blue loop for the, for the quad racers. The red loop consists about sand, field, bush, a lot of stones in the hills, a nice countryside. Uh, there's a lot of kudus and uh, natural uh, wild animals. Further on, is, uh, it's spectacular to be on top of that. A, a stony hill, we call it uh, scorpion hill because when you fell down you only pick up your bike, not, not the stones, because there's a lot of scorpions underneath it. On the second lap, Ross Branch managed to keep the gap to just over 15 seconds ahead of Kenny Gilbert and Lawrence Mahoney, two mates battling it out for the championship. No, no, I just had a right mindset. I just went into this race wanting to ride smooth and do well. So I'm just going to keep it together and see where I end up. Senior rider Bolly Van Royen lay in fifth overall, but would later suffer from some bike troubles, whilst teammate and OR2 leader Tyron Miller was on a flyer and had passed another teammate, Lo Schmidt. Schmidt still held the lead in the OR3 category. Not far behind this, a great battle started to heat up between Sharon Moore and Dylan Ings. Ings just waiting to pounce on the Kawasaki. JC Nienaba has also had a great start to the season, and the manhand Yamaha rider was on course for yet another great result. However, Bernie McGee was looking to change that, as he was now right on the tail of Nienaba. I don't feel any pressure today. Obviously, I do put pressure on myself to perform. Uh, I'm not as fit as I should be, not even any. Um, but I'm going to just go into it, just hoping to do the best that I can, keep it safe, get to the finish line, not make any mistakes. Hopefully, if the guys make mistakes in the dust, just pick them off one by one and get to the end. After a long layoff due to his injuries, Nick Pienaar was straight back on the pace, looking to hunt down riders such as Wade Blau, Estian Steenkamp, and Hein Bunny Kirk Jr., who in his own right was having a great day. Really fortunate to be where I am now. Really grateful for the help I've been getting from all the sponsors. You know, without them progressing in the sport, it's impossible. And uh, yeah, from being a junior to racing here in the senior national, it's quite a big leap. You know, the distance is way bigger, and. Uh, you know, the pace is really, really high. 
reminds me of the good old days, this, you know, but uh, hell of a lot of dust. You just got to watch yourself, but it's a good, safe race, and I'm glad to be out here. The main thing is obviously to put uh, put down a hot lap in the beginning and uh, try to separate yourself from everybody else as far as you can and uh, not make any mistakes, you know, it's so easy and the, the speed from everybody is so fast. If you overshoot one turn, then, um, you know, you lose four positions. So I think uh, the main focus for me today is not overshoot any turns and uh, just ride the best I can. Nearing the halfway point, riders held their positions and were looking forward to the compulsory 15-minute decontrol. Lo Schmidt had made his way back past Tyron Miller after he had suffered a huge crash and losing his peak in the process. The organizers have put on a good event. I mean, it's they've done the best with what they can do with the terrain. You know, it's very dry and dusty, flat out. But yeah, it's good racing. You know, it's nice because um, you can you can always see the guys in front of you. You know, you're riding along fence posts, so you're always chasing, which is really cool. You know, it's 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 good fun. It is at the moment, um, you know, obviously when the guys turn 38, they join into our class when we're about to leave the class. But listen, Bolly is a top runner and he's a good rider. And, uh, you know, if we if we want to catch him, we really have to go out of our game to try catch him. But the likes of Guy and me, we're having our good old battles. And, you know, as long as we're out here enjoying our riding and having fun, and that's what it's all about. It's been a good ride, you know, I mean, it's, everything's gone well. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. With only four senior riders finishing, it was a great result for Maida Labaskakni in fourth place. The battles we have seen between Guy Henley and Wayne Farmer in the past did not come to fruition on this day, as Farmer was out due to a seized motor. This left Henley in third place on the day, clean and clear. I was quite surprised. I mean, the Oaks are still like they're up in their game. I mean, they, 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 they're there, you know. I mean, I've got to keep watching for them. And yeah, it seems to be a very lucky class. After a few mechanical issues at this round, Bolly Van Rooyen was beaten for the first time this season and by less than five minutes. A good day out for Peter Hall as he took overall honours in the senior category. The Masters class had some new names in the top five, with Leonard Evans finishing in fourth place, while Kevin Paltzer finished on the last step of the podium in third, and Jan Burning in second. Today's Masters results went to Adrian Storm on the KTM with an emphatic 14-minute victory. Looking at the breakdown of the results in the Bush to Bush Stella 400, the senior class going to Peter Hall ahead of Van Rooyen and Henley. In the Masters, Storm takes his victory ahead of Burning and Peltzer. It was once again an amazing race in the ladies' category where Tay Perry showed her class with yet another win. With the overall ladies' category consisting of both bikes and quads, it was Liesl Barnard who finished in second place. We're trying to get the ladies a lot more coverage, so we're really working hard to um, just go out there and try our best. I mean, we're fighting against the boys. Chaudhry Monk did manage a great third place, closely followed by Morena Fenter in fourth and Anais Steenkamp rounding off the top five. <laughs> Alistair Drennan unfortunately suffered a huge crash, breaking his collarbone, forcing him out of the high school class at this round, whilst Dion Oosthuizen finished in a credible fifth place.
Nicholas Marburger had a seamless race and finished a great fourth place just behind third place finisher Silius Ferri. But the main race in the category was a tight affair between Edouard Vesta and Brendan Ferri, with Ferri once again claiming victory and extending his championship lead. Results in the breakdown of the categories in the high school class. Brendan Faree takes another victory ahead of Bester and Faree. In the ladies, Perry dominating on the KTM ahead of Barnard. In KTM news this week, firstly going international, Jeffrey Hurlings makes it 10 wins on the 2014 season so far. And Brian Baraguanath keeping it a little bit more local, wins out the Desert 1000 race and gets his seat for Dakar. At the halfway point of the race, there were only seconds between the top three riders as they were in a class of their own out front. Who would hold the level head with three laps remaining? I tried to push a bit harder the first lap and made stupid mistakes. I nearly threw it away in the morning, so I've got to concentrate now on the second half of the race and uh, get my head in the right place. The bike is unbelievable, you know, everything's going 100%. Just as soon as you get into the dust, you can't go any faster, so you're pretty much just stuck in that position. But yeah, Ross is flying, so we're all got a good pace going. Picked up wire on the last lap, so I lost a lot of time there. Um, but yeah, we've got three laps to go, new loop. So the first lap, just see what it's like and try plan where and what to do to make time. The peakless Tyron Miller was back into fourth place, with Dylan Ings also making up huge ground to now lay in fifth overall. It just didn't look like anyone was going to catch Ross Branch out front, though, especially when he could see his first hat-trick of wins just around the corner. I tried to pass Kenny on the, on the rocky climb. Every lap I catch right up to him, but everyone's riding so good, and uh, for me to close a big gap and try pass him is, uh, is a bit difficult. The fight, though, was now on between Kenny Gilbert and Lawrence Mahoney, and Gilbert was starting to make some mistakes. Heartbreak once again for Nicholas Pinar as he had to retire with just a few kilometers to go. Once again, fueling problems. The pace was unbelievable. You know, the last three laps was like a motocross race. There was no slowing down, there was no resting. Lawrence and Kenny were, were unbelievable. It's, it's great to race against them and be up there with them. It was uh, tough from the beginning. We Oaks are riding so well and a lot of dust this morning, so it's difficult to catch the guys. Yeah, I just tried to push really hard to catch Ross and I ended up crashing and then I knew Lawrence was coming, so I kind of just started overriding after my crash and then Lawrence caught me and got really tight and then he could see my lines and I was just, I don't know, I was just all over the place, but it was my own fault. The results showing once again Ross Branch goes three for three with another victory, this time extremely close, only 0.6 of a second. Lawrence Mahoney gets his second ahead of Gilbert and Miller. Yeah, you know, it's like you said, we have two races and we're in if The first race was okay. Um, we tried to make a comeback on the second one, we had a problem again. But all we can do is just give our best to the end of the season. And I mean, the season's never go until the last race is done. Well, <laughs> confidence and a bit of nerves as well. That's something I'm not used to being up at the front. Uh, I was hoping just to break the top 10, but uh, third overall is pretty good so far. Might drop down a little bit, but you know, I'm happy where I am as long as I can just bring it home and have a nice finish. I'm expecting a lot of dust and also now the sunrise, it's right, it's going to be so tough, the sun and then reflecting all the dust. So I think the first lap's going to be really tough, but after that we just got to push through and try and work up a few places. It's our last long national of the season, real desert star racing, so um, we, we're happy to be here and we, we've missed this sort of racing, we, we didn't do this one last year. With three wins out of three, who would be able to match the pace of Brian Baraguana? Starting in first place is such a big advantage with regards to dust, but if there is grass, you are the man who has to cut it and navigate the dangers first. Brian Baraguanath was once again in complete control from the start, but had a flying Andre Duplessis and David Hollis chasing hard, as well as podium finisher from round three, Justin Robert. The 
with a lot of racers, that, that's a different story. But without the farmers, we can't do the race. We need the terrain, we need them to understand why we do it. They have to shift their cattle, they have to move things out of the way for us, and they, they need to have, have the time for us. We thank them all for, for their support, for the, for the time they give us, allow us to ride on their farms. Andre Parks was once again performing higher than everyone's expectations as he made his way through the field yet again. Bernay Bester started well, but would unfortunately not finish the first lap. Retirement for Bester. Also interesting is that we're going to uh, through a milliland. The people must know their, their skills and not to be a harvester, but a racer. With the top five starting to pull away from the field, the pace just kept on getting faster and faster. All I'm going to do is just give my best and see if I can win all the last races and yeah, that's all we can do. Yuri Mayer had suffered two DNFs in a row and needed a good result here. After the first lap, he had already made up six places. Hannah Simon was pushing hard to catch Justin Robert to take victory in the Q2 class. And after a DNF, he too was looking for maximum points. But he had a hard task in keeping Jakko Moller behind him for much longer. In the Masters class, George Michaelides would round off the top five in what seemed a tough race for the quads. In fourth place, aboard the Honda was Peter Schenk, not having one of his best days. Rounding off the podium was Factory Racing's Tony De Santos, yet another solid performance. With one of the biggest shocks of the season, Yuri Mayer Sr. was beaten to the line for the first time in many years, with George Twicker taking victory in an exciting round four. Another solid performance saw Team Ride SA Ted Bobbier take fifth place in the senior category, 25 minutes behind Peter Walter on the Yamaha. Another of the DeSantos family put in a solid performance. This time, it was Paul DeSantos who took third in the seniors. With less than 10 minutes between teammates for victory, saw Stuart Freeman take the honors over Russell Ferreira on the day. A tight championship between the two after Ferreira's victory last time out. Looking at the results then in the Masters, Twicker takes the win for the first time this year over Mayer Senior and DeSantos. Seniors, it was Freeman, Ferreira and another DeSantos. For sure, it's a nice 450 track today. My gearing's a bit long, so we're going to change that now. Hopefully we can pick up a pace. We're just going to keep on pushing and see where we can get it. It was down to the final laps as Brian Baraguana still held the outright lead, but Yuri Mayer put in some blistering laps to find himself in second place and not too far behind the leader. Jakko Muller was back to third place and also held a great pace going into the final stages. Yuri got in front of me and Andre is like right, right with me, so I'm just going to try and run with him for as long as I can and hopefully I'll get a good result at the end of the day. It was unfortunately a slightly disappointing day for David Hollis as he dropped down the order to fifth place behind Andre Park, who seems to just get better and better every time he goes out. I'm happy to be home for a change, but yeah, no, I rode hard, uh, as hard as I can. It was another smooth day, thankfully. Uh, this morning took a while to get into it, but otherwise, uh, not too bad. Thanks to my man Jack, my number one mechanic, who's keeping my bike going this year. And uh, yeah, without him, I don't think we'd be here. So it's four for four in the championship so far in 2014 for Brian Baraguana, taking another win ahead of Mayer, Moller, Park, and Hollis. A strong top five. Kings of Dirt is presented to you by Broadlink. Serious bandwidth for serious business. Brother. Print, copy, scan, fax, label, and so much more. Driven by the all-new Ford Ranger. Ford, go further. And KTM, ready to race.